Okay, so the Empire has struck back. The DNC files a lawsuit naming the Trump campaign, his son-in-law, the Russian Federation, and WikiLeaks. So what is this about? The DNC believes that the named entities and individuals conspired to influence the outcome of the election in 2016. Let's say they did. Let's, let's accept that Trump is a Russian agent. Let's accept that Julian Assange is a Russian agent. Let's accept that everyone that doesn't agree with you is a Russian agent. There was a mass conspiracy to show the public the truth about the DNC and our political process, and the public disliked what it saw. And now, in an effort to reinvigorate donors in the months leading up to the midterm election, they are desperately clinging to this Russian collusion narrative. Much of their solicitation over the past year and a half has been tied to the Mueller probe, as the media has worked to keep people convinced that the president is going to be indicted. Not likely. So last week, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein told President Trump he is not the target of Russia, of Mueller's Russia probe, excuse me. And I said this a year ago. Nor is he the target of the Cohen investigation. So the media needs to keep those people who have swallowed this narrative pumped up and listening as they once again shift the narrative from Donald Trump is the target of the investigation to, well, maybe it's not Trump, but look at all these people he's associated with. They threw the election. Oh, ultra fancy. Si simultaneous recording. So keep in mind that a lawsuit against any Russian is essentially just a political stunt. So those individuals have immunity from U.S. laws. It's not like there's a reason Edward Snowden is living in Moscow, and they're not going to extradite him to face charges for treason or unauthorized access or distribution of classified materials or, or whatever it happens to be. It's not going to happen because he has diplomatic immunity. So it's a stunt. It's a stunt. So the DNC argues that a cyber attack undermined its operations. How can we call this a, a hack? The DNC refused to allow FBI forensics teams access to its servers, and they instead relied on the analysis of a company you may recognize from the dossier scandal, CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike said, you guessed it, Russia did it. So the Podesta emails and the DNC emails allowed the public to have a glimpse into how the sausage is made for the first time. They detail pay-to-play schemes involving the Clinton Foundation and the use of foundation money to pay for Chelsea Clinton's wedding. These emails also detailed the collusion that occurred. That's right, collusion did occur within the DNC against presidential candidate Bernie Sanders. For obvious reasons, this disgusted Democratic Party supporters who thought that Bernie would be given a fair shake. He was not. So currently, and I'm sure the mainstream media has kept you informed about this, the DNC and Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the same Debbie Wasserman Schultz whose laptop was accessed by Imran Awan, who was later arrested trying to flee the country in Texas, that Debbie Wasserman Schultz who went before the D.C. police to threaten them with legal action if they didn't return her laptop, which had been confiscated in an investigation. The same Debbie Wasserman Schultz. The DNC and Debbie Wasserman Schultz are being sued for deceptive conduct, negligent misrepresentation, and fraud. Those individuals who supported Bernie Sanders and thought that Bernie Sanders was the new candidate of change, the, the Bernie bros and Bernie sisters and all these people who, were, who had been reinvigorated and prior to that were, were sort of disenfranchised about the political process, but now they felt like there was someone in there who represented them. The guy is a complete idiot and thinks that everything can be free with no one paying for it. Socialized health care, socialized school, socialized everything. He's a socialist, but democracy and socialism don't, don't cooperate well historically. So deceptive conduct, negligent misrepresentation, and fraud. They, they deliberately worked to undermine the Bernie Sanders campaign leading up to the 2016 election. 
clearly Hillary Clinton was the favorite within the DNC establishment, but was not likely the favorite among voters, particularly young people who were trying to get out and vote for, for perhaps the first time. And you saw this effect across college campuses in the the turmoil and dissent that took place thereafter. So people were pissed. They were pissed. And these emails released by WikiLeaks detailed the what they were pissed about. Bernie Sanders had been betrayed. They had been betrayed. So here's an email uh, provided by WikiLeaks.com from the DNC email server. It might may, it may, make no difference. But for Kentucky and Washington, can we get someone to ask his belief? This is Brad Marshall, CFO of the DNC, writing in an email on May 5th, 2016. Quote, does he believe in God? He had skated on saying he has a Jewish heritage. I read he is an atheist. This could make several points difference with my peeps. My Southern Baptist peeps would draw a big difference between a Jew and an atheist, end quote. So post-lawsuit, uh, Bernie Sanders has become more involved in this and more vocal about his disgust with, with what happened, though he immediately played the game and threw a support behind Hillary Clinton when the time was right for him to do that. So I'm not going to get too much into that, whether Bernie was complicit in this collusion or not, but... He rolled over awfully quick once Hillary Clinton was decided to be the candidate, which likely happened in 2014, 2015, if not 20 years ago. So Sanders called for Wasserman Schultz to step down. And in an April 24 email, she received with an article detailing Sanders talking about the DNC being unfair to his campaign, the chairwoman responded, quote, spoken like someone who has never been a member of the Democratic Party and has no understanding of what we do, end quote. Brad Marshall would later issue a public apology for the subterfuge on Facebook. I quote, I deeply regret that my insensitive emotional emails would cause embarrassment to the DNC. Not in quotes, as if they hadn't caused enough embarrassment themselves. Continue the quote, the chairwoman and all of the staffers who worked hard to make the primary a fair and open process, end quote. So, long story short, if the individuals named in this lawsuit did, in fact, collude to tell the American people the truth, which is what they did, they, they showed what was happening behind the scenes, and people got a look at the great and powerful Oz for the first time. They realized that it's just a little guy, just like everyone else, claiming to be this thing that he's not, and so the the people's party, the party of the working class, the party that represents you, that represents me, that that claims to be fighting for the underdog, in fact, destroyed the underdog's chance at winning the nomination. They pushed Bernie aside in favor of the establishment candidate who took the bank money, who took the Saudi oil money, who took the African warlord money, who took money from the Red Cross and Haiti victims, they they supported and elevated the establishment candidate at the expense of the people's choice, who arguably was Bernie Sanders. I, th I personally think Bernie Sanders would have won an election head-to-head -head against Donald Trump had the Democratic National Party, National Committee, excuse me, not gone against the interests of its voters. They may have won the election, but I don't think it's about what the voters want. I think it's about what's good for those deep state embedded people in the political system. It's not about what you want. It's never been about what you want. And for the first time in 2016, we, we saw direct evidence of how that process works. They don't care what you think. They care what is going to keep them in positions of power the longest. Hillary Clinton has never had a real job. She has been a political power broker from the time she graduated college, before she graduated college, she was working for Barry Goldwater. So she's never had a job in the private market. Bernie Sanders has never had a job in the private market, and yet we want these people to come in and fix the economy and get America back to work. I digress. So if, if they did, in fact, collude to tell the American people the truth, 
I hope people continue to engage in this type of collusion. It's my favorite type of collusion. The more truth that gets out there, the more legitimate information, sourced information, verifiable sources, the more of that information that gets out, the better. The more informed you are, the more informed I am, the better able we are to make decisions that put our interests first. So I would recommend that you support independent journalists that are covering stories like this, that are covering stories that the mainstream media won't cover and they won't talk about and they won't touch. Look at South Africa. What's happening in South Africa right now? You hear anybody talking about it? No. Look what's happening in the UK. You hear anyone talking about it? Nope. What's happening in Sweden? Nobody's talking about it. You can find little little corners of the internet where people are talking about this stuff with sourced, verified information, but it never bubbles up to the public consciousness. And I would, I can only assume that that's by design because it, it doesn't seem likely that they would just miss these stories. When people are being literally crucified and raped, nine, nine 10, 11 year old children, while their parents are bound and gagged and forced to watch this in South Africa, you would think that the media wouldn't be able to just gloss over that. It's beyond me. Also, I think we should enthusiastically support organizations like WikiLeaks. That's a donation-only service. They're, they are, I believe it's a nonprofit entity, but donations are what keep that organization working. And that organization has done more over the last two years than all of the mainstream media combined. And I would challenge you to find a statement issued by WikiLeaks or a document released by WikiLeaks that had to be redacted, that had to be apologized for, that had to be edited. It doesn't happen. Can you say that for any of the mainstream media sources on television? Can you say it for Yahoo News, BBC News, Reuters, RT? Can you say it for any mainstream media source? I doubt it because I read them and I see the redactions. So who's giving you honest information? YouTubers are. WikiLeaks is. People on Twitter. The people being pushed to the fringes of the political discussion in favor of who is going to go after Donald Trump next. You can only talk, talk about that for so long. The narrative only holds up for so long as the evidence comes out that wait a minute, Trump hasn't been under investigation this whole time? Hillary is still under investigation? Why didn't CNN tell me this? I think you know why they didn't tell you. So you can follow me on Instagram here, obviously, live stream, simulcast thing. Um, you can find most of my live streams on YouTube if you enjoy what I do. Uh, search for Benjamin Arman, B-E-N-J-A-M-I-N-A-R-M-A-N. If you like or dislike what I'm doing, please let me know. My goal is to share information, and you'll be best able to tell me how to do that effectively. Uh, thanks for listening, gang. Take it easy.